Yo, 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 what's up? I'm Lepin over here for Unapologetic Live. Taylor's in the house! <laughs> <laughs> Can't get over how amazing that <laughs> sounds every single day now that we got it on the switchboard. Guys, welcome to Unapologetic Live. It is Friday, which means fun Friday. <laughs> um, you know, I wanted to stay away from what everybody in the news is talking about right now, and that's January 6th. January 6th committee that. January 6th investigation this. You know, I'm over it. I don't want to hear about it anymore. I don't think you guys want to hear about it anymore. So we're going to do something a little different today. You know, I did an episode on Dylan Mulvaney, who was a trans TikTok creator who was blowing up on the platform for doing day one of being a girl, day 50 of being a girl, day 68 of being a girl and whatever, uh, going as far as to even be reached out to from Tampax for a sponsorship, a female hygiene product company reaching out to a trans woman by the name of Dylan for a sponsorship. You can't get any more clown world than that. So I figured let's go back to TikTok. Let's find some creators who are making waves on the platform. People are watching and let's see how we feel about them. This uh, TikTok creator that we're gonna focus on today, I am deeming the Karen of cultural appropriation on TikTok. Her name is Sujia One, at least that's her handle on TikTok. And I see her pop up on my For You page every now and then. Every time a white person makes something that's not from white culture or it's like an Asian dish and they say, oh, I just heard about this or I can't believe nobody's made this before. Sujia takes it upon herself to make a video saying, this is Asian and F you, and you're a cultural appropriator. And we can go back and forth in the comments. I would love to hear what your guys' thoughts are on the term cultural appropriation. And before we get into these videos, I kind of want to establish where I stand on that, where Taylor stands on that. For me, I am not down with the cultural appropriation phase. Boo, tomato, 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 to anybody who uses those words, I, I just don't agree with it. I think it's just yet another thing that we can pick at people at, specifically white people, and come after them and attack them for as in order to move forth this woke movement and to find some evidence of what we would call systemic racism or or racialized oppression of other people, of minority groups. So we see this whole thing with cultural appropriation. When I was a kid, I was told that if white people got their hair braided or if white people put their hair in dreads, that was cultural appropriation. They were stealing from African-Americans. They were taking our culture and claiming it as their own. And I was told, you know, if anybody tries to touch your hair, that's a microaggression, all these crazy leftist terms. And now that I'm older and I've sort of aged out of that phase in my life, I just view it as appreci appreciation. If you look at something and you go, oh, those braids are really beautiful. I would love to put those in my own hair. And you're a white person who doesn't typically do that. Go for it. Do it. I don't care if you see black food or Asian food or Hispanic food that you want to cook in your own house. Go for it and do it. I don't need credit. I don't need you to make a whole video like you're blessing the food saying thank you so much for the African-American or the, or the Asian or the Hispanic ancestors who created this dish that I now get to nourish my body with. I don't need all that. I don't need this white guilt, white savior groveling to people for the food that they make and the culture that they created. I don't need it. I'm totally fine. You make the food you want to make. You do your hair the way you want to wear, the way you want to wear it. You dress up the way you want to dress up, and you go about your day. And because our world is so devoid of real racism, not saying it doesn't exist, it does exist, but it's on a very, very small scale. We have to look and search and find under things to, to look for actual instances of oppression. So now making food that's not a part of your culture without acknowledging it is cultural appropriation. And for me, I disavow that idea. Not in my house. Not in my house. Taylor, <laughs> what are your thoughts? I'm, I mean, I'm obviously pretty much in the same boat as you. This this whole, anytime you hear someone complaining about culture, cultural appropriation, they're generally reading racism into situations in which it was really no racism involved. It's yeah. just a neutral, um, someone is discovering a food or cuisine for the first time or, or appreciates a cuisine from another culture, yeah. but you're not doing it the right way. You're not... Um, going through a treatise and citing the sources of where uh, this food came from and explaining the historical significance of things. And because of that, you are 
it's racist. But, yeah. you know, to them, I just ask, like, if you, you know, eat a casserole, uh, an American staple or, <laughs> my, you know, my grandma's casserole, like yeah. if you think that my grandma's casserole isn't good, is that like, you know, culturally insensitive? Are you hating on? And the answer is, of course not. Right. These people never get worked up about that because it's always a one way street. And it just comes from this broader worldview that is trying to find racism where there isn't. It's, you know, Abram Kendi. It's not a question of did racism occur? It's where did racism occur? Right. And it's just an entire worldview staked on um finding racism and guess what if you're the person who discovers the racism then wow how virtuous are you and then you can educate others and then they'll applaud you for being so enlightened and they will feel enlightened and i think we're going to see a lot of those dynamics at play in some of the videos we'll watch i miss the old pats on the back i used to give myself after i virtue signaled for nine hours a day i really do miss it but alas we are in a different phase in life now I want to read a comment from somebody on youtube kariki says people use the term racism so loosely i feel like it's lost a lot of value you. I think we're going to find that that is the theme, the prevailing theme of the episode today of just using words frivolously and saying white people this and culture appropriation and that, that it starts to just mean nothing. And you just look like somebody who is really bitter day in and day out. I can't imagine looking for this all the time. Here's video number one. I wanted to start off with what is uh, Suji's most liked video. It says 4.8 million likes on it. Uh, you can only imagine how many views you have to get to have 4.8 million likes, tons, millions and millions and millions. So here is the first video. So you've probably seen the video, the guy that makes the omelet and he lays it over rice or something and cuts it open and all this runniness and nastiness comes out. I just don't see it, how anybody can eat it that way. You won't be seeing that here, but I did try to- Nastiness? This is how you as a food content creator describe other people's food? For any of you who don't know what that is, that's Japanese omo rice, and it takes a high level of skill to create something like that. How can you, as a food content creator, be so fucking disrespectful to the people whose food you're creating? Pause, I might as well say language warning on this lady. She also likes to use the F word quite a bit. So if you've got young years watching right now, uh, maybe we, we skip this episode for today. Um, but so far, what I'm seeing is a woman who, who looked at something and said, I don't like my eggs like that. I think that's nasty. So I am not going to eat that. Is that something that I would go out and say about somebody's food that they're making? No. But do you have the right to do that? And is that just like, who cares? Yes. I can't imagine being so sensitive that when you see somebody say, ew, that looks really gross, you get upset about it. I come from a family. So my father's from Nigeria. We would make Nigerian food all the time as a child. I still eat and make Nigerian food to this day. And a lot of people will see that and go, ew. You're eating goat or you're eating tripe? That's so gross, I would never eat that. And to that you just go, oh, okay, who cares? That's your own personal preference, that's totally fine. And to make just a, a TikTok career off of just going around and saying, you know, this is cultural appropriation, I can't believe this white person said this, and the amount of people that feed into it, 4.8 million likes and all of these comments on it is just ridiculous to me. Yeah, and also wasn't the thing that the woman that was referring to it as nastiness, it was just the inside of an egg, mm -hmm. like a raw part, of, like an egg yolk. Mm -hmm. You know, and like people eat their eggs over easy, over medium in the United States too. So it's not yes. like I'm uniquely criticizing the food of this culture even. Um, it's literally just she's using in a general sense the word nastiness to describe something that's oozing. Right. And yet this this woman is staking her entire argument on the video on you calling the oozy part of an egg, nasty, right. which had nothing to do with a culture or criticizing the, the a food that a culture eats. Well, don't worry. Suji is going to try to make the claim that this is a claim that is uh, purely for Asian people who make this rice. Or, yeah, this specific dish. I have my guesses, though. And, you know, something I find very funny is I don't see you telling people who put a runny egg on an Eggs Benedict gross or anyone who puts a runny fried egg into a cheeseburger disgusting or nasty. No, only when it comes to Asian people doing it, right? And yet, here you are, slathering on mayonnaise onto anything that'll fucking stand still. Newsflash, mayonnaise is made with raw eggs. But I suppose after what I saw you do to sushi, I shouldn't be surprised. Not to mention your selection for the sound on that video is also very telling. Yeah, so I don't know, maybe you should stick to potato skins and casseroles and shit. <laughs> <laughs> You disrespected this food. I'm going to disrespect what I believe your cultural food to be. 
It's a one-way street. That's exactly what Dude, I said. It's, it's a one-way street. It's a, sir, don't turn that way. This is a one-way street. Only I am allowed to make jokes at other people's culture's expense. I'm surprised Only she didn't un- play a Jimmy Buffett song whenever she said that. <laughs> 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 Wasted away again. <laughs> it's just so crazy to me. And again, 4.8 million likes and over 100,000 comments of people being like, well said, you go, girl. You made her delete this video. You go. You're so great. So much bitterness over what is food. I don't care if you got together a bunch of what you thought was African food and threw it in a pot and just mixed it up until it looked like garbage and ate it and said, look, guys, I made African food. I don't care. Or look, guys, this is something that I invented. I don't care. You know what you do? You wake up in the morning, and because you are a human, you need food to nourish your body, and you eat that food however it is you see fit because you are an individual. And to get so upset over how people eat food or what they say is nasty or what their preference is blows my mind, but it speaks to where we are at as a culture right now. It's so devoid of serious racism, so devoid of actual acts of systemic racism that they have to find it in food videos that people make on TikTok. And when I tell you that people like this will never be happy, you're just going to come and you're going to come to find that as we watch more of these videos. Uh, let's see. Here is video number two. This one's titled Privilege Comes in Many Different Forms. And the first hashtag is ableism. Can't wait. On today's episode of What You Said versus What I Think You Meant to Say. First, here's what you said. In America, the land of the free and home of the lazy, we have literally two pieces of bread and a cheese that you buy because if you're too lazy to make a cheese sandwich you can just buy it so judgy but here's what i think you meant to say so judgy said who said who for kids that might have to prepare their own meals because their caregivers are busy working or for families on really really tight budgets or for those who may have physical or mental disabilities that prevent them from cooking i am so happy to see that foods like this exist and that i can look past my physical mental and financial privilege to appreciate them yay that's what you meant to say right And look, I know that you issued an apology for that video, but honestly, it was your apology that prompted me to make this video in the first place. Girl, why did she issue an apology for that? She's making a joke at her own expense. She's a mother going to the grocery store, looking at grilled cheeses and going, ha ha, you know, America, we're so lazy. We have two pieces of bread and we put cheese in between it. And when we're too lazy to cook for our kids, we get them grilled cheese. She's saying that as an American, grabbing the grilled cheese for her own kids. And you have to issue an apology video after that. I cannot wait to see what in 10 years people are apologizing for. I swear to God, it's gonna be like, you say the gra- the grass is green and you're gonna have to apologize for that the next day because you offended people who are colorblind. Like, I don't know what the next thing is going to be, but it feels like we're just moving deeper and deeper into that vein. So crazy to me that you can't make what is clearly a joke about buying grilled cheese because it's easy to make without somebody calling you a classist, racist, privileged, ableist individual. <laughs> Yeah, my favorite too was how she's what, referred to the the instead of saying the word parents, she made sure to say caregivers, mm-hmm. which is the the term that's in vogue right now. Yeah, um, which will probably be offensive at some point, but um, yeah, it's she's she's dotting all her t's and crossing all her eyes on the political correctness scale right now. So yep. you know, pats on the back. We need like a virtue signal button on the soundboard. I wonder what that's gonna be. We'll, we'll figure it out. There's going to be a virtue signal sound. If you guys want to comment down below what you think that specific sound should be, uh, we will we will program it and, and <laughs> use it because we you we have to use it on the show so often. I feel like I constantly have to talk about the virtue signaling that companies are doing, that people on TikTok and social media are doing. So we need a button, maybe even a drinking game at this point, <laughs> because if we did a drinking game, you guys would be smashed, smashed after every single episode that we do. Uh, let's see. What do I want to go to next? There's just so many of these. Here's one that's got 488,000 likes and nearly 7,000 comments. This one is about frying rice noodles. Who knew that that would ever be controversial? How has nobody done this before? I'm calling these Jolly Ranch Curls and they're so good. I got it in my head that I was going to make fried pasta with ranch seasoning because, oh my God, how good would that be? I tried every pasta under the sun and the only one that worked was rice noodles. Yeah, really, how has nobody, I mean, nobody has thought to fry and season rice noodles before? 
I mean, thank God for white women. If it wasn't for white women, would anything in the world ever have even been invented? Are you really claiming to be the only person to have thought of doing this? Seasoning rice noodles is your invention? And then you credit TikTok for the inspiration? During Asian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month? Um, not during Asian and Pacific Islander Month. How dare you? Not during Asian and Pacific Islander Month. <laughs> That's such an important month. I mean, everyone knows which month Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month is. I am so sorry. I'm so sorry, y'all. Uh, I uh, may is the, it may the chat knows <laughs> just like I know yeah. chat tell us what the month is wink, wink. we all know <laughs> it's just oh unbelievable so you have to think that someone like this is just purely looking for her own culture I don't imagine she does education on anything other than Asian culture on TikTok and it's almost because you can't expect somebody to know every single culture and every single tradition or historical significance of every single piece of food that they make or they eat if I as an individual thought one day without having any prior knowledge of what Asian people have made as cuisine thought I would love to fry noodles. I wonder if that works. Can I fry noodles in oil? And then you go and try it and that one doesn't work and that one doesn't work. And then you try rice noodles and it works. And you put, what did she say? Ranch seasoning ranch. on it or whatever. Yeah, which was the whole impetus of the video, which by the way, I don't think any Asian cultures use ranch. Yeah. She was trying to find a noodle that she could fry to put <laughs> ranch seasoning on. That was the whole point of what she I was- I can't believe we're like giving this in-depth commentary. Like she's trying to find a noodle to put the <laughs> ranch powder on. <laughs> Let's break this down, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> How is she a racist? We went from ranch noodles to racism really, really quickly. And now we're doing like sports commentary on how we got there. Oh, my gosh. But if that was the experience that you or I went through or Taylor went through, guess what that would be that day? When you made that dish that day, that would be the first time you've ever seen it. And that would be your first knowledge of somebody being able to do something like that. Am I going to then, before I post on social media or do whatever I do with that picture, am I going to go, oh, no, I wonder if some indigenous tribe from the 1432s made this food. So I need to go and do a Google search and pull out my encyclopedia to see if anybody's ever fried rice noodles. No, you don't have to do that. It's OK. It's OK. And this brings to, to question really what offense means and as much as this is funny haha she fried rice noodles and somebody's mad about it think about what this means culturally think about what this means as a society and how we move forward because 500,000 people agreed with the take that was made here and when we talk about your right to the first amendment and how people react to that and what's hate speech and what gets censored on the internet the the primary driver of that argument at least from our side of things is the question of a, is that your First Amendment right really valuable? Yes. And then B, who decides what's offensive? Imagine if this was the person who got to decide what was offensive on the internet. Imagine how, how shackled our language would be and uh, the things that we could and could not say. Because although uh, Sujia says that she values the First Amendment and she's really just about accepting, taking accountability and accepting the consequences of it. Imagine if she had a little bit more power. Imagine if people who agree with her had a little bit more power over what it is that you are able to say and do on the internet. Do you think they would not exercise that power? Do you think they would go, oh, that's a little bit authoritarian. I'm not going to, I'm not going to touch that. I'm going to let people say whatever it is that they want to say. Probably not. I bet they'd feel a whole lot better with white people not being able to say I made fried rice noodles today. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's just so weird. And again, it's because we have really nothing else to comment on that we comment on the way that people make food and what they say about it. That's it. She would be a master at the game we used to play called uh, Can We Make It Racist? Yes, she um, would. That's like you just take a random word, object, noun, just throw it out there and then figure out how there's racism involved in that thing. And... Yeah, she would uh, fry our noodles in that game. She would fry our noodles <laughs> and then get mad at us for eating them. <laughs> um, yeah, let us know down below. Do you, should we bring that game back? Because I know if you guys used to be fans of Will and Amla Live, you probably saw us play Can We Make It Racist? Can We Make It Offensive? And you guys submitted all the random things that we did and played with. So uh, let me know in the comments down below if you'd like us to bring back that game because that was a fun time for all of us. I was pretty pretty killer at that game with my past of being a leftist. I was 
banging them out, banging them out. So uh, let's get to this next one. Bang is a triggering word for uh, people who have been in places where there's wars and violence, and those are primarily people of color. So that was a very racist thing for you to use that onomatopoeia. Whoa, 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 whoa. But Joy Behar on The View just said that black people have never owned guns. So how could that possibly be true? <laughs> <laughs> how could that possibly be true? Whoa. Uh, and if you guys haven't seen that clip, there's a short on our channel of Joy Behar saying, as soon as black people get guns in America, there will be gun control the very next day. Mm -hmm. The most dumb take I have ever heard from anybody on The View, and that is truly saying something, because we have hundreds of clips of the ladies on The View saying stuff that is just absolutely wild. But... Even better news, Sujia does not keep her commentary uh, strictly on food and cultural appropriation. She also goes through other creators' things and, and likes to talk about other ways that we, make, quote, make fun of Asian people or are racist towards them. Let's see this video. This has 238,000 likes, over 3,000 comments. Toit, my eyes will look. I'm going to look like Tony the Tiger toy. Just watch. Toit like a toyga. Watch this. Actually, I like change nationalities real quick. Look at change your nationality that's weird how could pulling your eyes back make you look like you were born in a different country like if you were born in the united states your nationality would be american or if you were born in italy your nationality would be italian or if you were born in greenland your nationality would be Gre greenland greenlandian greenlandic i'll google it greenlandic but no matter what you would still be you so i don't understand how doing this to your eyes would would change your nationality oh did you mean ethnicity or race Tell me, which ethnicity or race were you referring to when you were saying that this would change what ethnicity you are? Asian. She was referring to being Asian. <laughs> I'm just going to put it out there. It's almost... And here's the problem. <laughs> what I just said is going to be considered offensive, that she meant Asian. And it's very clear, I think, to anybody who has eyes watching that, that she meant Asian. Is that offensive? Only offensive if you make it offensive or if you consider it to be offensive to yourself. Same thing with controversial. It's only controversial if you think it's controversial. Are we sp supposed to ignore reality? Is that where we're supposed to be right now? Because if somebody told me, you know, I made my lips really big and now I feel like I look like a different, she meant ethnicity or race, but whatever. Now I feel like I look like a different ethnicity. I would go, yeah, okay, black people typically have bigger lips. It seems to be a trait that we that we team, seem to carry, a characteristic that we seem to carry, and that's the ethnicity that you're talking about. It is true. There's nothing false about it. It is more common. It is a characteristic that you witness in other people. If I put on white foundation and said I'm starting to look like a different ethnicity, I would be meaning people who are white, European, you know? Uh, would that be offensive? No, because it is simply true. And if we're going to start saying ignore reality, ignore the fact that when you see Asian people, it is quite likely that their eyes are a little bit slanted or a little bit thinner than yours and, and, and maybe not as wide. Are we meant to ignore that reality? And the answer is yes. The answer is that the people on the woke left who are pushing this progressivism and pushing this PC culture where you can say this and you can't say that are looking for you to ignore reality and accept what it what is their reality accept their truth which is so often why when you get in these conversations and you ask well what is the truth like, what do you mean i can tell you my truth and i can tell you my truth only but what is the truth though can we get down to what what that is is the truth that asian people can have slanted eyes and that's not typical for black people or or white people or hispanic people is that the truth yes Okay, so when a white woman acknowledges that in a TikTok in a very uh, inoffensive, non-disrespectful manner, is it okay to acknowledge that? To Sujia, that would be a no, but it is the reality. I'm so sorry that that's the reality, I guess. I don't know if that's something to be sorry about. It just is. It just is. Yeah, and acknowledging realities that have been determined to be politically incorrect makes you a racist, makes <laughs> you a thought criminal uh, or a word criminal. Mm -hmm. And uh it's it's a dangerous time that we live in, and um, you know we we have we're having Matt Walsh on the show next week, um, and he, I just finished watching his documentary, and he's talking with one of these gender experts, and he's saying I'm trying to get he's asking them what is a woman, and he yeah. and they're asking like why are you asking that question? He's like, well, I'm trying to establish reality, I'm trying to find the truth, and he was like, well, that's 
He's like, I'm suspicious of your motives, basically, yep. when in finding the truth. Or like, why are you even in searching for an objective reality? And they don't want to be held accountable to an objective reality, objective truth. They want to be able to, like you're saying, create this reality that they get to determine what's offensive, what you're allowed to say, what you're allowed to see, how you're allowed to speak. And uh, if you violate the rules that they establish, then they get to cast you out. Um, yep. But so if there's an objective reality that can supersede their reality, then they don't have the power anymore. And so th their whole, um, the whole thing is built on, their whole ability to enforce this down on everyone is built on everyone agreeing to and being afraid mm -hmm. of being called a racist. And that that's how they get their powers, just through the fear of, uh, people have of just wanting to be nice and not offensive but yep. this is how we've ended up in our culture and in a time where everyone's um tiptoeing around biological reality basic mm -hmm. facts that we everyone knows is true common sense now has become a thought crime and yep. people are, have just been too scared and i think and i hope that we're reaching a tipping point in our culture where uh common sense is coming back and people are just going to be like, you know what? I don't care what woke Karens like this think anymore. Yep. I'm just going to acknowledge basic facts and basic realities and not be afraid of the consequences. Yeah, I feel like right now we're in the teeter-totter of that game that we're playing right now. Like you look at this video and it has 200 and nearly 40,000 likes. And the comments are like, why do you feel so attacked? She wasn't saying it in that way. OMG, relax. Sheesh. <laughs> uh, and the girl was not being disrespectful at all. So we are just hanging in the balance of this argument of are we going to go for this PC culture BS or are we going to acknowledge what is true and real and are we going to be able to make jokes about what's true and real? Not that this girl was even making a joke. She didn't say it wasn't beautiful. She didn't say it wasn't attractive. She just said I look like a different nationality when I pull my, my skin back on my face like this. Nothing rude about it at all. But because our threshold for offense has become so low, so low. People can jump on you for, for just that. And the threshold is, of course, lower if you're white. We all know that. I, I don't want to you know, point out the elephant in the room, but there's the elephant. If you're white, uh, you have a lower threshold for being able to offend people. And that's a common factor in all of these videos. It's always a white woman making these videos. And then she calls them out and says, well, look at this stupid white woman who doesn't recognize culture or didn't pull out an encyclopedia before she made dinner for herself. This is where we're headed. And... You have to acknowledge those, the, the subtext of it, which is we hate white people, let's be honest. That's the subtext of a lot of the conversations that we're having. Yeah. Really, I could go around and make all of these videos on TikTok and probably never be called out. The only reason I'd get called out is because I'm conservative, but they would tread lightly around me as they do so often because guess what? I don't have the skin color that works for you being able to target me and attack me. So. Uh, that's exactly what it is. is. As soon as they can find somebody white and claim that they are ignorant, it is socially acceptable to do so. And if you just go and look, the same people who tell you, you know, these platforms are not biased towards conservatives or white people or all this stuff, go and look at what is socially acceptable on social media to say about white people, which would never be accepted to say about another race, ever, ever, ever. You could say that white people are dogs, that they don't have any right to speak, that they shouldn't have their first amendment right, that they should be hung, killed, all this stuff on social media. Switch, switch it out for black, switch it out for Asian, which you should never be saying in the first place, but guess what? Taken down, chastised, fired from your job, canceled, ostracized by your community, but but white people, it's free range. You can say whatever you want to do. You can you can say the most racist, asinine, blatantly oppressive comment that you can possibly think of, and you get a pat on the back for doing it. In fact, you're an ally to marginalized communities for doing that. And this is a small scale version of exactly that. Here's another one, and we're back on the food train, baby. I'm thinking of starting a new series called What You Said versus What I Think You Meant to Say. So condescending. Starting with what you said. Here's how to make two ingredient high protein wraps. Add one cup of Arrowhead Mills lentils to two cups of water and let it soak for at least three hours. Pour your water and lentils into a blender and blend until smooth. Lentils are rich in protein and fiber, which help with blood sugar control. To cook the wraps, I use olive oil spray and a nonstick pan. Pair your wrap with protein, fat, and fiber. What I think you meant to say. I recently learned a very simple two ingredient recipe from India called dosa. Dosa has fed and nourished billions, literally billions of people for centuries all across South Asia and India. 
It's a very simple recipe and one that falls in line with whatever diet and lifestyle it is that I'm living, whatever. And I, of course, would never dream of claiming this food as my own or giving it a new name. Why? Because it already fucking has one. That was what you meant, right? I'm thinking of starting a new series called- No, that's not what she meant. Because if that was what she meant, she would have said it in the original video. It's not what she meant. She meant, here's the recipe that I made. And if you'd like to make it, here's how I made it. That's what she meant. She doesn't have to acknowledge every single culture and where the lentils were were born and raised. <laughs> like she doesn't, you don't have to do that. And I will be, I'm actually, I'm, I'm not shocked by this at all. But what I am shocked by is how- consistent this seems to be on platforms like this. And I don't know if this is just uh, just exclusive to TikTok, but when I go and see people's food recipes, there's constant comments about cultural appropriation. You didn't acknowledge where you get this from. And, and people who are just creators on the internet having to go back and make apology videos for saying, I didn't know this was Asian, or I didn't know this was Hispanic, or I didn't know this was African. It's ridiculous. Baby, just make your food and eat it and eat whatever you want and eat what tastes good to you. And if you want to share the recipe to people, you can do so. You don't have to tell people that the the Zulu tribe in Africa <laughs> made your food for you like 300 years ago. It's fine. It's totally fine. And I promise nothing's going to happen other than some random anons on the internet getting really mad for no reason. Nothing's going to happen. And I can't imagine how bitter somebody must feel to just look for this content every single day. You have to feel really bitter to just constantly be looking for this day in and day. I can't imagine this is fulfilling, although it is fulfilling in the fact that it gets you millions of followers. I think Sujia has like 1.1 million followers on TikTok purely from seeking out people who she finds are offensive and making videos about them. And then the crowd that watches her videos goes and attacks that person until they delete their video or they delete their account. And then they come back in the comments and celebrate, oh my gosh, we made this white girl delete her video. We made her delete her account. She's not gonna make, she's not gonna make food content for us anymore. We went and destroyed what was making somebody happy because of cultural appropriation, right guys? So good, so good, amazing. Uh, here is another one. Is this one of an Asian person making a crepe or <laughs> a black person making a tortilla? No, Taylor. Oh, okay. I'm going to let None you know right now, uh, they will always be at your expense. Oh, okay. So it's always white people. It's always your brethren gotcha. who are the subject of the video. So sorry. Bottom line, cultural appropriation, i.e. when certain persons or groups leverage their privilege to profit off the sale of someone else's culture without commensurate compensation results in less. Commensurate compensation? What are you supposed to do? Pay reparations <laughs> for, for every meal that you make. <laughs> I made a tortilla today. I need to pay reparations. I'm sending, re uh, I'm sending remittance over to Mexico for the families that live there because I made a tortilla today. Come on now, come on. Delicious food. As usual, Joanne put it perfectly. But me, I'm one of those people that learns best when I see examples of what people are talking about. So let me show you the trajectory of what happens when people culturally appropriate food. It starts with a beautiful cultural food that's prepared beautifully, seasoned to perfection, all of those things. Then somebody appropriates it. In this case, I'll be using Ainsley Rodriguez as an example. You remember Ainsley? This is easily the most addictive cucumber and then she does what people who culturally appropriate do by making no mention of the people who created it and then just kind of doing whatever the fuck she wants with it and then you get this please take notice of what she calls it super addictive cucumbers onto some sliced cucumbers add one tablespoon of sesame oil one tablespoon of soy sauce one tablespoon of rice wine vinegar and one teaspoon of garlic powder Shake it up and then let it sit in the fridge overnight to marinate. Then add some everything bagel seasoning on top or just some sesame seeds. Really good. You see what we're saying? Cultural appropriation. It just leaves you with a watered down version of the original, both literally and figuratively. Hmm. 633,000 likes on this video. Don't you dare ever take a recipe and make it differently. Don't ever, ever touch a recipe and change something or swap something out that you don't like for something that you do because that's cultural appropriation and you're creating a watered down version. Is her version less beautiful than the, than the traditional Asian one? Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? Sounds pretty offensive to me. Everything bagel seasoning is pretty white. Uh, so uh, it seems like you're, you're denigrating white culture. You should really take that back. You should make a full apology video for what you just said about everything bagel seasoning because I'm sure there's a white person somewhere 
who created that and is sobbing because of what you just said. Also, yeah, I mean, all, these are the same type of people who make such a big deal out of diversity and, mm-hmm. you know, celebrating uh, the richness of other cultures. How are cultures supposed to interact and intersect? Yeah. Um, you know, like we celebrate fusion cuisine and stuff like that, but, you know, it's not okay to put everything bagel seasoning on a, a cucumber from another country because that's uh, appropriating it for your own culture. It's like, it's, it's, and here's the, here's, here's what it comes down to is like, if you're, white it's not okay to have a culture you don't have a culture or at least if you're like a white american um you're you're not allowed to have one and you're you just be deferential and everything else is perfect and pristine and you are so lucky if you just learn about that um but you know god forbid that you try to take your experience you know they're so big on lived experience your lived experience is not valid as a white person right it's uh you know you're you you should just be from a in a position of apologizing for your existence because your mere existence is violence um and you can you know you just uh pedestal and elevate the other cultures uh and and god forbid you put everything bagel seasoning on it i know it's uh, I just I there's not much more to say about it and it, what you're saying is true there's this massive campaign of like white people have no culture you hear it said all the time white people have no culture there's nothing that they can lock themselves into so they feel the need to steal other people's no everybody has a culture everybody has a background everybody has traditions and history and ancestry uh, that that's simply untrue it's false and it's this lie that is just uh, predicated on the idea that we can just be racist towards white people that is all that it is. It's so crazy to me that you can't touch a recipe. Like, God forbid, I guess you guys are supposed to just eat, like, white bread and mayonnaise for the rest of your lives. <laughs> like, I don't, and casseroles, like she said before. That's what you're supposed to eat for the rest of your lives. And if you ever make an Asian dish, make sure you kiss the foot of whoever created it uh, before you go ahead and make it and eat it or, or post a video about it. And, yeah, that's that's really all that it is and if you look for racism if that's the lens that you view the world through you're going to find it absolutely everywhere and this is what she has managed to do i can't imagine what you would do to make this person happy other than research every single dish that you make all the time okay here is another one We're going to watch just a couple more before we close out for the day because it's the same old song and dance with every single video. Incoming This is definitely the most disgusting 24.3 second video I've ever made. It's my first time eating raw sushi. Uh, uh, It's kills me. All right, that's enough of that. What, what are you doing? The fuck are you doing? You call yourself a chef, albeit a sketchy chef, which sounds pretty accurate, but you call yourself a chef? And this is how you behave when you eat foods from other cultures? And also, this is sushi. Like, where the fuck have you been? I mean, one would think that as a chef, you'd have at least just the bare minimum of respect for foods from other cultures. Just the bare minimum. And I know a lot of people are speculating that this was a joke, but jokes are supposed to be funny, and I personally find nothing funny in watching a middle-aged woman burp and belch and retch in disgust at cultural foods. I just, I'll never fucking find that funny. Is just a little respect and decency just too much to ask for some people? And wouldn't you know... It- she just doesn't like the food, bro. <laughs> I just don't know what to tell you. I just can't imagine getting so triggered. Like, if this is something that triggers you in in that it makes you feel the need to make an entire video about it like what really triggers you what is what is ace level angry when it comes to cultural appropriation or like real racism what does that do to you because this is so crazy how low the threshold is to be offended here my sister what she used to do to me (laughs) my little sister shout out to my little sister whenever i was like angry or triggered she'd just be like bro, you're mad. (laughs) It makes you so much more upset when somebody just looks at you and goes like, bro, you're mad. (laughs) I just wish everybody would comment just be like, bro, you're mad. You are mad. Over what? Over a girl who doesn't like sushi? Like that's, that's it? I just don't, I just don't get it. And again, celebrity off of this. I mean, 1.1 million followers off of just being like, you're racist and this is cultural appropriation and how dare you not like Asian food. And, and, and if you if you if you don't like it, you better not say words like nasty or disgusting or make a face because you 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 should like it. <laughs> Dude, come on. One more here. This one is feigned ignorance will only get you so far. Incoming you stitch. Are, now we blend. 
You're looking for a mashed potato consistency and we're gonna cook this. In the caption of this video, you ask, what should we call this, rice gnocchi? No, you call it duck or you call it mochi because that's what it is. And for any of you fuckers out there who wanna say, um, actually it's not because uh, she used basmati rice and duck and mochi are made with glutinous rice, stop. You're fucking embarrassing, stop. Because we all- Bro, you're mad. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you're like so mad. Bro, you keep getting madder. We all know what it is. And you can't tell me that as a food content creator, you've never heard of duck or mochi. Tteokbokki, mochi ice cream, does that maybe ring a bell? No, nothing? I find that very hard to believe. And even if I went against my better judgment and gave you the benefit of the doubt, there are people in your comments telling you what it is. And this is exactly what happens, right? First, you feign ignorance. I didn't know. I don't know what that is. I wonder what would happen. Even you just alluding to glutinous rice tells me you probably know what you're talking about. But you leave comments like this so you can come back to them later and pretend like you didn't. And then you just ignore and delete. And while you and people like Ainsley are getting tens of millions of views on your videos, you are quite literally and figuratively erasing the people and the cultures from which they came. This is a real problem. Incoming Stitch. While I'm watching this, I'm just trying to think of how much further does this possibly go? Like, what's the next thing to culturally appropriate? What do we have to think about every time we make a video? Do I have to be like, before I start the podcast today, I just want to recognize the CCP because all of my clothes were made in China and that's a long-standing tradition for all the clothing made here in America uh, and I'd like to thank them before we move forward because you're seeing this product in my video today I what what is this coming to full force I don't know uh, it, communism like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like is this uh, somebody post on Twitter post the question on Twitter like is this rock bottom is this the worst of what wokeness can be right now? This whole distorted reality of girls can be boys, boys can be girls, everything's racist, everything's cultural appropriation, white people are meant to apologize, and if you don't apologize, you're a racist, and everybody who disagrees with me is, is an evil demon individual who doesn't care about human life or human rights. Is this rock bottom? Or is there something more? Is there another step? I'm curious to hear you guys' thoughts in the chat, but is there another step to this? Does this go further? I, 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 <laughs> I don't know. Or is this the sign of a truly prospering society? Is the fact that we are arguing on TikTok over menial food videos the sign of our prosperity? Is this how far we've come in the great and wonderful free America that because our, our lives are so free from actual struggle, actual suffering, that we get to sit in our cushy apartments where we work from home as TikTok creators and judge white girls for making food that is Asian or Indian or, or whatever root it's from? Is that the true sign of prosperity, of wellness, uh, and of, of being a successful country? Because this is where we're at. And it either goes up or down from here. I'm hoping it goes down. I'm hoping there's just a revolution of reasonable, centered people who watch this stuff and go, oh, we, this cannot sustain itself. We can't continue to be like this. This is not the generation that we need to grow into. This is the generation we need to grow out of. I'm hoping that's what's happening. But if I know anything about TikTok as a platform, it's all young people who are cheering this on and clapping and saying this is great and so, so glad that you called her her out and and she's she's blocking people now as his first comment says she's blocking people that are calling her out or she stopped making videos or she deleted her account is this just our reward system in what is our cushy soft totalitarian environment that we live in now is this where we find purpose is this where we find meaning in degrading other people and calling them cultural appropriators and racists is this the back and forth that we will find ourselves in the pendulum swing that we will live in for the rest of our lives i sure Hope not, <laughs> because I don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's a, uh, it's so, it's so interesting. Um, we, so many of the blessings that we um, enjoy in life now, thing, all the, I mean, the, the things that made possible, the wealth that we enjoy, the standard of living that we enjoy, the technology that she used to make these videos, mm -hmm. um, stem from and came from a civilization that uh, was built on, uh, well, starting all the way back from like. Judeo-Christian uh, ideas to Greek uh, philosophy and into the Enlightenment. And so much of that, um, like the science, reason, all these very progressive, awesome things um, helped create the civilization that we now enjoy. Right. Um, and the 
there's this new t tendency, this worldview that seems to have emerged since like the 1960s mm -hmm. that out of like postmodernism and, and neo-Marxism that just takes all that and, and frames it as a patriarchal oppressive system um, or this, you know, white supremacist that's this all built by white men and they wanted to control things and do it their way. And that's how you get to like math is racist and objective standards and education is a bad thing and all this stuff. And it's like they view progress as undoing that whole system. Mm -hmm. They do. They see progress as burning the old white man system to the ground. And the image that just popped in my mind is in the new Star Wars. They have to burn the the Jedi Temple with all the books. I hated the new Star Wars because it's just it's, it's indicative of how our culture sees the world right now, which yep. is just uh, it. It's the the mainstream way that people view things is like you, the way toward progress is by undoing everything that brought us to where we are. Right. And look, the system's not perfect. They'd allow there's a lot of like flaws in the system. There, of course, you know, it took us a long time to get rid of racism and abolish slavery and all these things. There's, it's not way. No one's saying, and no one's saying that America has been perfect. That's never committed any foreign policy sins or domestic policy sins, or that Western civilization has not had its hiccups. But just take a step back and look at the the, the lives that we enjoy, the freedoms that we enjoy, the idea that that of democracy, the ideas of uh, individual rights. Uh, the, the, and in a lot of ways, America is what stands on the shoulders of all that progress of history. Yep. And to have an entire worldview that is all about dismantling that and denigrating it, casting it as something altogether evil that we need to do away with, it's so ungrateful and so uh, just presumptuous. And it's like it, it's nihilistic. It's, it's like an anger at, at being. And it's like, who hurt you? Like mm -hmm. you're sitting in your cushy apartment in air conditioning in modern America, filming videos on a cell phone about, uh, you know, and just m making up all these grievances. And it's like just I, there's something about it that is just not uh, it, it's it's coming from a very bad place. And yep. I hope that we can defeat this. If there's really like a war of worldviews that's going on and there's this like you know, modern modernism that of, hey, We've made a lot of progress. We still have a long way to go, but the things that we've learned along the way have been good, and let's build upon the, what we've learned. And then there's the postmodern uh, neo-Marxist view that's like, hey, everything we've ever done is staked, is already built on this racist edifice, and we, it's nothing good can come out of it, and we yep. won't make progress until we can undo the whole thing. And uh, anyway, I just it's funny we're like watching little tiktok videos mm -hmm. about this today but it really if you dig down into the it's roots deeper. of where this is coming from it really is yeah this war of the world views that's happening in our culture today yeah i promise it's about more than fried rice noodles guys yeah. like i promise this speaks to a, a deeper a deeper sentiment that is just constantly being expressed and i just struggle now it's like i don't even think progressivism is the right word progressivism is like taking what you have and building upon it and constantly striving to to be better and do better it's not progressivism anymore it's like this transformative i want to completely abolish and break down everything before we even move forward and the, the fact that they get labeled as progressive and just uh, is unbelievable to me. It's unbelievable to me. But I, I have a feeling that, like I say all the time, this is not sustainable. And I'm hoping that just the people who see this and go, ah, this is not going to work. This is not going to continue. We can't continue to live like this. Get enough voice and enough power to to just put this in its place. That is the, the thing that I want. Have it put in its place. And I used to be just like... Sujia, of course. I would have seen a video like that and been like, what a disgusting little white girl who made this food and didn't recognize who did this and this and this and that. And it's because it's like, it's not even who hurt you. It's like, who convinced you that you got hurt? Like, who convinced you that you have experienced this in the country that we live in today? Because that's where it is now. It's, you don't, you don't need to have been hurt anymore. You just need to be convinced that you have. And that was exactly what happened to me. Growing up in a conservative rural area, what should have been hotbed for systemic racism, didn't experience an ounce of it, but got convinced that somebody hurt me. Got convinced that there was groundwork laid a long time ago that would stop me from, from being whoever it is that I wanted to be. That's what the true question is. Who convinced you that somebody heard you? And of course, you know, the answer is academia. The answer is Hollywood. The answer is social media. The answer is legacy media. The, the answer is just anybody who thinks that they can gain power from you thinking that you're a victim. And that's exactly what it is, even down to the food that you see other people eat. That's what you want control over. And mixed in that is this 
really openness to authoritarianism. Because if you get mad at an individual for something as small as what they eat, and then a government tells you, well, I can take care of that. I can make sure that never happens again. I can make sure they don't say things you don't like. I can make sure they don't eat things you don't like. Or if they do, they have to say this prayer where they acknowledge the exact culture that it was made and, and how it was made and all this fun stuff. You're going to go, you know what? Absolutely. Because I was convinced that those people heard me. And if not them, it was their ancestors and they haven't apologized for it yet. I deserve something. I, I deserve 20 acres and a mule for everything that I've been through in this life or that my ancestors have been through. And you are just open. You are a playing field for authoritarianism when these people can can take advantage of the victimhood that you feel from other people that does not exist. Can't can't express that enough. There was not a single video that we watched today that was inherently offensive or that you could say these women were coming at you with the intent of offending, of appropriating, of being racist. Not a single one. We're looking at just girls in their kitchen going, I thought this was delicious. Love to share it with you. It's actually a, a very kind thing. To, to go, I made this, I thought that was great, let me share this with the world in, in the way that it was introduced to me. But no, it has to be negative, it has to be evil, because we need to be open for authoritarianism, we need to be open for victimhood. Those things work synergistically, and I think that's the end of my commentary on the noodle videos on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> it's deeper than noodles, guys. Yeah, it's deeper than noodles, man. Uh, we'll, we'll do, a, we'll do a, another game, instead of can we make this racist or can we make this offensive, can we make this deep? <laughs> mm. can we give you a life lesson from from what we are watching day in and day out and honestly it's a good practice to keep in your life because so much of what we see is not deep at all and it's just surface level and rotting our brains so try to make things deeper try to look deeper into why these things are happening because i promise you it's not just videos on tiktok that's not all that it is it does mean something deeper it does point to something more that millions of people are watching this day in and day out and it is resonating with them it is truly resonating with them to where people like this become celebrities in a sense. They become household names in a way because kids are scrolling away on their phones and constantly seeing it and taking these messages in. So it does mean something more than what the video itself expresses. And uh, I would urge you just maybe not be on these platforms even though I'm on them and we have that own struggle and make a whole episode about that. But so long as you are, look for the deeper meaning in the things that you're seeing and, and, and maybe think of why you're seeing them. That is my theory and Taylor's theory on why this is happening and why we're seeing it. I'm curious to hear yours. It could be totally different. I could be wrong. Uh, I feel no shame in expressing that. I could be totally wrong about why this is occurring and why we're seeing it. So I would love to hear what your take is. Is this just harmless? Is this just somebody who's just voicing their grievances and is just mildly irritated at these things and making videos about it? Sure, let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this stream and you were interested in what we had to say today, please like, subscribe, click the notification bell to be notified every single day when we go live. If you're watching on PragerU YouTube and you're like, wow, she's streaming today on this channel, it's because we only do it on Fridays. So if you wanna see the rest of the week's streams, you can go to my channel, Unapologetic, Amala Epinobi, and subscribe there. We're almost to 60K, guys. You guys are rocking it, killing it. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for supporting us. And if you want to support us off of YouTube, you can go to PragerU.com or you can go to our Spotify, uh, our Google Play, our Apple Podcasts and support us there by leaving a five-star review in the comments down below. Again, let me know what your take is on this. Am I reading too deeply into an Asian lady complaining about rice noodles? Could be, because uh, this is what I eat, sleep, and breathe now, so I could just be looking into things that mean absolutely nothing. Let me know in the comments down below, and also, we will- Also, what is your favorite food of uh, another culture that you appreciate of another or culture. appropriate appreciate? And if you're gonna put it in the comments, you better put a detailed history of where it was made <laughs> and who made it. I wanna know the individual down to the day that they were born who invented that specific dish. And if you don't, you are a racist cultural appropriator. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a happy weekend. I'll see you Monday.